This is the Bullet List Podcast with two guys that haven't got a clue about anything. Hello, listener, and we're back after a long gap, and we're going to talk about why there's been a long gap. But before we start, thank you to Stuart Mitchell of Catch the Mice for doing our little voiceover in the intro. That was a great episode. It was a great episode. Uh, I, 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 I truly enjoyed his his company and conversation. Yeah, it was good. We must get him back. Definitely. <laughs> so, so before we dive into why yes, <laughs> we why do, we've been absent, uh, and, let's do let's do a short list. Yay! Okay, well, what do you say? Short list it is very short because there's only really one major subject that we ought to be talking about. I mean, there are two subjects. I mean, yes, we can talk about Zoom events. But really, everything's dominated by just how awful things are at Facebook these days. Facebook is a dumpster fire. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. But it's it's every day there seems to be something a little extra coming out that just puts the company in a, well, to put it politely, in a very bad light. Yeah, but you know what? So I, I'm not bullish on on Facebook in the short term. Um, Zuckerberg has to go. Uh, but the one advantage Facebook has over everyone else is the grandma effect. And I actually think I coined that. Uh, but it's the fact that all everybody got grandma to use Facebook. And she ain't switching platforms. Right? Well, either she, uh, either she doesn't, well, she won't switch, but she may leave. That's yeah. the two options. Either you stick with it or you don't. You're not going to simply switch. Because well, no, but, but, but I mean, you know, Facebook is good in a lot of ways, right? You know, my mother-in-law, who is 80-something, <laughs> um, you know, can see pictures of my kid, right? And she can like them. And it's an easy way to get people, to keep people connected. But they are, you know, pardon me, but they're fucking up. The thing is that Facebook wanted to be everything for everybody everywhere. Recent announcements, um, and I haven't got a citation for this, I need to find it, uh, says that they're now focusing on young teens because they felt that they were all over the place. And if you think about it, they were trying to um, keep the advertisers happy. Yep. They're trying to keep the business pages happy. They were trying to keep the users and the family connections happy. And it was like pulling them all different directions be only because they were seeking profit the whole time. time. So, what you, but you want to know what, and this is actually a lot of events, a lot of big conferences fall into a, a similar trap. And the trap is at the beginning, you did one thing and that was you made your users happy or your attendees happy. And that made your show phenomenally successful. Then you started worrying too much about the sponsors and the neighbors and the this and the this and the this. And then it always it always goes that way. So, you know, for events and conferences, go back to simply making the attendees happy. Everything else will sort it shit out. Um, and, you know, same thing with Facebook. Go well, back to being a nice place. It's not a nice place anymore. Yes, and you can see that happening because Facebook was copying features um, from lots of different other platforms in an effort to be, come and use us, don't use them. We've got the same features, but we're better anyway. If you then apply that to, uh, like you say, to an uh, in-person event or virtual event, if you're not keeping the central users, visitors happy and uh, impressed by what you do, and you spend more time worrying about your advertisers and about how you're being perceived. It's not good. No, I, you know, this is going to sound, this is, I'm sure, way oversimplified. But if Facebook just went back <clears throat> to one column that gave me posts from people I know and advertisers chronologically, it would explode again in popularity. I'll tell you what would make major difference for Facebook. Drop the advertisers and have a subscription fee. 
if you even make it like a dollar a month considering how many people are actually using facebook they could I, actually you know, i'm going to agree with you and also i think because if people paid to use it they'll have more respect for the platform and we wouldn't see so many problems and there'll be a better investment in the security it's all just a pursuit of profit instead of pursuit of user experience and happiness you know or uh, you know, have two tiers, right? Have a subscription fee that there are no ads and free with ads, right? And then, you know, I would be willing to pony up for a certain demographic of family member that maybe can't, you know, maybe two bucks a month. Two bucks, two bucks a month is a lot for some people, right? And, you know, just to keep the crap from those um, sites off their feed, I would pay the money. Yeah. I think it'll make it a much nicer place if it's, it's like, you know, how the theory is with gym memberships. You know, if you pay for a gym membership, you're more likely to go and use it because you don't want to waste your money. Well, in theory. In theory, yes. In theory, but, yeah. But it's, uh, the theory is that if you're paying to use Facebook, you stop being the product, you become the user. And I think Facebook might actually be a bit nicer to you because you're paying them money as opposed to relying on advertisers. And then you don't have to worry about how you treat your users. There is a certain, as much. There is a certain group now, though, that thinks the Internet is free. And, and you know, those people are, would raise hell, right? That's like people who, who you know, I'm all for free software. Right, you're a Linux guy. I think it's awesome. I yeah, yeah. I love it, but you know, free comes with limitations, right? And Facebook is a prime example. If you're using it for free, you're the product. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And I, I I go with it. Anything that you use for free, you are the product. Yeah. So, but all right. So Facebook. Hopefully they can they can write their ways only because so many associations, so many events, so many conferences. I mean, that is their primary way of reaching out and connecting with their attendees, their members, all that. Yeah. Um, if Facebook were to implode tomorrow, there are a lot of groups and a lot of events that would be in deep doo doo. Oh well, like the uh, delegate Wranglers, who has a massive group on Facebook. Right. I'm not really yeah. sure they've actually got a, a website, but you know, that's where they create their community. Yeah. And I'll throw that out there too. If you are an event, a conference, an association, whatever that relies on Facebook and you do not have a well running place on the home that is your own, uh, you need to go out and get a place on the web that is yours. If if they didn't learn that lesson after the what, six to eight hour outage a few weeks yeah. back? If that didn't teach you that you need to have a better home on the net than a social network, then please listen to this and, and just go off and do it. Dude, some people have to be hit over the head before they. Yeah. But well, anyway, the... well, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, and of course, the other, the, other, the other thing that was being talked about with Facebook, not that I want to keep going on about it, is they're coming up for a name change. <clears throat> now, I don't know whether they're going to do a Google and have a holding company. Like Alphabet is the holding company to Google and a bunch of other different companies. Is that what they mean by Facebook changing name? I mean, I can't yeah. imagine it going to becoming. Everything on this side of the pond now is holding companies. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, maybe they'll change it to crap book. I don't know, but whatever. <laughs> <coughs> okay. Now, the other short list item is. Yes, we do have uh, another one. And I'm, this one will be really short because actually next week we will actually have an episode on this will be the main bullet list next week. Lovely. Right. But Facebook has fine, uh, not Facebook, look at where I'm stuck on Facebook. Zoom yeah. um, finally has Zoom events. Uh, and, you know, I always say that Hopin <clears throat> was the Death Star moving through the galaxy, right? It, it was, or through the solar system, it was sucking up everything yes. in its path, buy-in companies, all of this. Well, later on in the Star Wars 
saga. Uh, what was the what was the planet <laughs> that moved in? <laughs> right, that's Zoom events, and I think everyone is everyone should pay attention um, only because, similar to Facebook and the grandma effect, everybody. I, I am doing a, a I am planning right now a very large virtual event and it has a, a, a demographic that skews much older um, and does not and they all know Zoom, right? Great, except we're not using Zoom. We are using uh, a, an, another platform <clears throat> that requires you to have Chrome. It requires you to do X, Y, and Z. A lot of these people are academics. They're on Macs. Safari is the default browser. I mean, it, it makes you want to cry. And if when we had started this process with this client six months, even me and the client were laughing about it like last night. We're like, if Zoom events had been around six months ago, we wouldn't be where we are today. So I think that Planet Killer One or whatever that thing was, yeah, I, yeah. it's going to have a major effect on the virtual and hybrid event world. Well, I posed that question to you before we hit the record button, that did anybody consider Zoom as a proper uh, virtual event platform? And nobody did. Uh, well, was, they will now. But, uh, well, this it, is the point. Before, they were only known as the place where you talked to your grandmother or you did business meetings, one-to-one -one kind of thing. Yeah, oh, we did, you know, if we look at a lot of the client events we've done where Zoom has been the focus, right, you would go and you would find a virtual event platform that allowed you to, you know, I always hate embedding Zoom because it looks terrible, um, but we would actually use virtual event platforms that would, you would bounce out to Zoom and the platform itself was simply a a container for all the Zoom links. Essentially. Yeah, it, it, it was a distribution point, an endpoint, as it were. Yeah, but this is going to be so. I don't want to spend a ton of time on it today because next week I'm I, I am actually my Zoom events uh, experience will start later today when when we log in um, and start building something just for fun. Sounds good. Look forward to hearing all about it. Should we take a break? We should take a break right at this point. You're listening to the Bullet List Podcast. So how can you show your support for the bullet list? Well, uh, Pop and I are, are, are men of simple means. Um, so what you can do is head on over to the bullet list site and click on our AirMeet link. If anyone has ever used AirMeet, I use AirMeet all the time. I would never recommend a product that I don't use. Um, it has actually saved my bacon many a time. Uh, with virtual events and hybrid events. Airme is a fantastic platform. You get uh, an awesome attendee experience with cool tables where people can do meet in small groups and then go to their sessions. It is really awesome. So if you want to support us and you are looking for a virtual or hybrid event platform, check out Airme by using our link on the site. You're listening to the Bullet List Podcast. Right, and we're back, back to our main um, bullet list discussion. So now we're going to talk about things that are wrong with us. <laughs> yeah, this is this is the reason why it, an astute listener uh, would have noticed that there's a bit of a gap between episode five and this episode. That well, and we're going to call it officially the mid-season break. It is. It is a mid-season break, and is all to do with the fact that neither of us have been very well. In no. particular, in particular, you, Keith, because you came down with the dreaded contamination of COVID. I got the Rona, man. And I'm did, did just so everyone knows, I am a I'm a science guy, so don't hit me with any of your anti-vax, anti-whatever bullshit because it it's stupid. Um, I, I am fully vaccinated, uh, and I had a breakthrough case of COVID. Um, so that's kind of where I, I was out for a while. Yeah, you were. I and mean, we did have a few chats while you were uh, towards the tail end. And yeah, you were. It wasn't, well. was not a pleasant experience. No. Um, but what does this have to do with the bullet list? Well, it is our bullet list. Coping with illness as an event professional. It is indeed. 
So also so that um, last week I came down with a rather bad head cold. And yes, it was a head cold. Please do not automatically assume that I came down with COVID. I mean, you got the right. Rona. You get, you get the Rona, Bob. <laughs> no, no I, I must point out in fairness of balance, as you have to do on various channels, other diseases and illnesses are also available. <laughs> well, it's really funny. I, you know, years ago, you know, when my son was a little, little kid, I used to do the, I used to say, he would go, I, oh, my tummy hurts or whatever. And yeah. I would, uh, and my standard answer was, well, could be Ebola. <laughs> 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 and, and then we they had that big Ebola outbreak, <laughs> and I'm like, uh, okay, that's kind of creepy. I can't, can't oh, that, that's really kind. You know, I don't mind. It might be Ebola anyway. Good night, sweet dreams. <laughs> but so l l let's dive into this list. Uh, I know that uh, you know uh, this is actually a really important list, and I think that it's going to be kind of cool walking through this list because we're going to get two different, very differing perspectives on this list because you are in Europe and I am in the United States. Uh, no, I'm in the UK. I'm not sure I'm in Europe anymore. Brexit. Uh, uh, well, that's on you. They would have you back. <laughs> yeah, but they'll probably make us stand in the corner with a hat on. You know, just, uh, you stand there until we're ready for you. Uh, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so yeah, both of us have been ill. And one of the challenges of being ill is also being self-employed and there's nobody else to take over for you. So a lot of things come to a standstill because you're not doing the work because you're not up to doing it. Yes. You know, and fortunately for me over my little bit of time, I've got a pretty decent team. Um, you know, actually they're better than decent. So, you know, there were people that could help out and make sure that things were moving forward. That's um, cool. yeah, but that's, and, that, that's an important point because you communicated with your team saying it looks like I'm not going to be around for a while. Yeah. Communication amongst your uh, fellow co-workers, whether it's people you actually work with in the same company or it's a team of people that you are using on an ad hoc basis. Um, and also telling your clients that, you know, I've come down with something that everybody else seems to be getting, like COVID. People, they will understand. They will um, take it. You know, you're a yeah. key person, and if you're not feeling up to doing it, they'd rather you got better. Yeah, and, and I and mine did, right? Because, again, we had that team that could jump in, and the clients were like, hey, man, do what you need to do, get better. You know, we'd rather you were here, but, you know, in order to be here, you got to go away for a few days. Yeah. But, you know, I feel bad here in the States, right? And and I, I don't know if this is true over there, but here they're cutting staffing so much. And prime example is a, I have a very large pharmaceutical company near me. There are many of them, so good luck trying to figure out who it is, um, that cut their meetings and events department, you know, and I'll use round numbers. I don't, These are not real numbers, but, you know, they cut 60% of their meeting and event staff. Right. So you went from 100 to 40, but the 40 is doing the work of the 100 now. And sometimes through no fault of the ill person, you know, your other teammates resent you now because you're the one that's not pulling your weight. Um, and that is not their fault. That is the fault of the larger organization that is only interested in money. Yeah. Yeah. So. What's bullet two? Yeah, so um, I suppose right now the major health concern is, for most people, is going to be COVID. Um, so stop vacating, stop waiting, stop messing around, stop believing what you read on Facebook while it's still online. Get vaccinated. Just just go do it. Please. Anti-vaxxers are morons. <laughs> I, I don't mind putting that out there. It's it's they are looking for any excuse not to get the jab. And it's ridiculous, right? It's just go and do it. Uh, you know, this <clears throat> a would have been over two years ago if everyone had put on their mask. Yeah. And now we'd be out of it if everyone had gotten the vaccine. But instead, we plot along my business and your business and everyone in the meetings and events industries, our businesses are all suffering because of morons. Okay. I, I, I will not mince words anymore. No, it's going to be said. It has to be said. There are far too many people out there going, 
Uh, and these are the same people, um, and I'm sure I've said this before, they will go to a pub to see a guy to get a sachet of powder that they come back and enjoy that powder over the weekend. Right. They don't know, don't know who's made the powder. They don't know the bloke. And it's not a pub they go into too often. Yet they will question the vaccine's contents and think it's some sort of government conspiracy. I'm sorry, you know, it's the, the vaccine is probably the most documented and most tested thing that we've got going right now. Yes, it was done with speed. It had to be done with speed. There's been tests. It's okay. And if you want to attend a face-to-face -face event, if you want to go meet your clients, if you want to go traveling on a fam trip, or if you want to go and check out a destination for an important thing, you have to be vaccinated. There's no prevarication. There's no... I, it. I had one of them say, yeah, back in smallpox and polio, you know, it took 20 years or 10 years, right, before they it, they knew it was safe. Well, yeah, because you were doing trials with people in California and Australia and Europe and Texas and all over, and they had to write down the data. And then they had to send the data to someone else who then had to write down the data. And then they had everything was done by hand. This yes. was all done. A, the research on this type of a vaccine was done in the 10 years previous and then it's all done by computers so all of these places are putting in their data and it's all no one has to do any math all right it just shows up and you know what your data says so, and not only that it's, it's not just the one company battling on their own with their own researchers and not sharing we live in a modern age where technology is, is miles ahead than all those things that happened 10 20 years ago even five years ago yeah you know, it's multiple companies, multiple researchers sharing information with governments and with other people. We know exactly what's in it. If I you know. want to go and be an event professional in a face-to-face -face situation at an event that either you're attending or you're organizing, get jabbed up. The tinfoil hat crowd um, used to be funny. Um, you know, it used to be fun to, like... You know, you had your crazy aunt, Uncle Carl or whatever, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, They're not funny anymore. I mean, they're literally killing people now. And uh, this is really not part of the list, but the thing is, um, most businesses, and more and more businesses, are saying if you're not vaccinated, you're not working here. Now, this is big airlines, these are big companies um, are saying these things. It won't be long for that, for that attitude, once accepted, to be part of smaller companies. So that big company you like quite like working for, if you're not jabbed, you're not going to the event, you're not part of the organizing team, we'll get somebody else in who is. You ain't vaccinated, you are not working one of my events. No. And I'm a small guy. Yeah. I got a live one next week. And the client said, nope, gotta be, everyone's vaccinated. Um, now we ha we actually have two crew, who it's medical reasons. They are they are pro science. They are absolutely one hundred percent. They if they could get it, they would. Um, they can't, um, and they will not be there. And you know what? They get it. They're like, you know, we understand why. Yeah, that's fair enough. That's you know, so enough. they're they're actually in support roles from their houses. Great. You know. Yeah. That's good. So anyway, let's move on on that one because I could go on on the tinfoil hat. Oh yeah, that that. that could also almost be a an episode one. <laughs> um, okay, so going back to the some of the things we mentioned before, one of which was if you are self-employed, if you're working on your own for yourself, providing a great service to your clients, if you become ill, as much as they may understand that you are down for a few days, maybe a week. But when it starts getting close to three weeks, four weeks a month, as COVID can do to you, sure. um, long, long as long COVID as they call it, um, you, you're not working, you're not earning. And even if you've got some sort of business insurance, some sort of, maybe even some sort of government assistance, because the UK government was doing that for a while, at some point, you're going to lose a client. Or five. <laughs> all of them because you're not there anymore and they will find someone who is yeah 
Now, Which I'm is- not saying this is people who are unvaccinated, going back to our previous thing, but even with a vaccination, as you've proved, you can still get COVID. Obviously, the vaccination is there to reduce the risk and to reduce the effects if you do get it. But, but you're still going to get it. I mean, I had a head cold uh, that knocked me for six, for like three days. Luckily, it was um, late Wednesday, Thursday, Friday in the weekend. So for me, it didn't, it came at almost a good time if it was going to happen. Yeah. But it did stop me doing the things that I normally do during the day. Well, um, and I think that, you know, that goes, you know, to what you're saying, you know, your business insurance, the programs, whatever you can rely on. I, I think that that, goes back to have know what your options are now so you can deal with it when it happens it is a horrible thing to have to go and find all of that information and all of those resources at your that you may have access to once you get ill or once you know if you break your leg whatever it is right so find out what all those options are now yeah it's a day of work you know, but if you have all the websites and all the stuff you need right handy, if something happens, you can dive right into it. You're not in the research phase. Well, this is it. I mean, it's better to be prepared and plan for it. You know, when they say uh, plan for the worst, hope for the best, that sort of thinking. I'm not saying, yeah. you know, you should never assume that you're going to get something really nasty. But you just, if you're just a sole person in your business, if it's just you, you in your business, there's nobody else going along because maybe your business doesn't suit having more than one person. But yeah. at some point, you're going to get ill. It's just going to happen because that's life. Well, and I, I actually think that you know, talking about the 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 small the smaller team, this is okay. This is true for large teams too. Never mind. Uh, but that actually segues perfectly into bullet number four, which is communication is the key, right? At, yeah. So, so not even com- you know communication with the agencies and the people that might be able to help you your insurance, but also with your team. Now we're living in a period now where um, we're just starting to get into the period where talking about mental health and health in general is becoming more acceptable. A few years ago, nobody would talk about how they were feeling depressed or how they were health wise. You know, it, if anybody was to talk about their major disease, uh, it's, it was probably too late for them anyway. You know, because you hear about somebody's got cancer, but they're in the end phase, and now they're writing about it. Right. You know? Well, and now I... we're getting to talk about it a lot earlier. We're talking about people who have... Um, I've noticed a post on Facebook, uh, not so much on Facebook, but LinkedIn. People are sharing how difficult business is and how it's affecting their mental health. They are now communicating with the world. Yeah. They're going through a difficult patch and people are reacting in a very positive and supporting way. And that you know, is new. And, you know, and it, it, it's tough, right, for people to start talking about that stuff. I mean, I come from a really old school New England family, right? And mm. you didn't talk about your problems. <laughs> You know, well, it's the English attitude as well, you know, stiff nope. upper lip. Keep right. Going. Just kind of plow through. But I think yeah. people are realizing that, you know what, that's all well and good, um, but it doesn't work. Right. I want I to, in order for my team to be 100 percent, sometimes one of the team has to step back for a little while. And that's OK. Right. We'll get through. We'll we'll get by when we'll got your spot here. Right. So. So I would much rather that my team be healthy and happy uh, or as happy as they can be uh, because it actually makes the work environment more pleasant. And also probably more productive. Yeah. So, yeah, communicate with your with your team, communicate with your customers, communicate with the people who may well be able to help you, lift you up and keep you going through the difficult times. Yeah. Well, and again, segueing right into the last bullet on this list um, is when they come, when you or they come back to work, um, let them ease in, right? Yeah, yeah. This is something I've had a conversation with other people about. Um, I was particularly worried that when COVID was deemed as being over, yeah, I can't see that being something <laughs> happening too soon. But, um, but. The thing is, when when you go right, we can all go back to work now. We can all go face to face. 
the uh, furloughs are finished, you know, we'll all get back to work. I was wor really worried that people were going to come back and expected to work their socks off to catch up with all the stuff that didn't happen during the COVID, like gaining new clients, servicing existing clients, basically a rush back to work. And I don't think that's particularly good for mental health, for people to be rushing back and saying, come on, let's get this done. We need to do all this, all the work we've missed. We've got to do it this week. Well, no. it, you know, and when I got back from, from my little COVID episode, I was, I, you know, I came back from necessity <laughs> and then also it's just kind of how I'm wired. You know, I was getting up at five, five thirty and working until six or seven o'clock at night. That is just not good. Right. Oh, it's terrible. So you do, you need to, you know, you know, it doesn't need to be a five week ramp up, but a week ramp up, you know, start one day short and, you know, ease back into it. If you can, you know, I, again, 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 going back to point four, which is, you know, um, communicating. If you can say, right, I've only just got recovered from this nasty looking disease. I'm going to be easing myself back in slowly. Please be patient. Yeah. And, you know, you know. with the communicate, if you communicate with people and your boss isn't a dink, uh, you know, they'll let you ease back in. You know, they're not going to, you know, yeah, I, I know a lot of them that would freak out. But, you know, most people are going to be very understanding. Yeah. As, as both you and I are like. Bleh. Yeah, as both of us are trying not to <laughs> cough violently over the microphone. Well, luckily, luckily, you can't catch it over the Internet. There's a lot of things you can catch over the Internet. Rona ain't one of them. Thankfully. <laughs> yes. Uh, all right, good evening. Get us out of this one because we're we, we've we're we're up to our thirty minutes here. Yeah. Okay. So uh, to summarize the bullet list, then as we like to do. So um, number one, so clients and coworkers want to stand. If you need to take time to recover, recovery is important. Please um, communicate it to your team, to your customers that you're recovering from an illness. You're easing back in, which is almost number five. Number two. Don't, don't mess around. Get vaccinated, please. Just go off and do it. Don't be a no. dink. No, what you meant what you meant to be say is don't be a dick. But there you go. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, if, you, if you could swear, so can I. So yeah, if you're an event professional, then be professional about your health. Get vaccinated. Uh, business insurance. Do some research. Uh, do some research. Not yes. have coffee this morning. Um, find out what your options are before you end up with a nasty disease that takes you off and gives, gives you downtime. Ebola. <laughs> Ebola, yeah. <laughs> yeah, expect the worst. Ebola. Um, communication is also very important, not with just with your team members, but with your clients. And also reach out to support organisations. For example, Eventwell in the UK. Uh, if you are suffering uh, mental health issues, talk to somebody who knows all about it and can reassure you and help you out with it. And returning to work, don't rush back. Take your time. Ease in. Don't overdo it. And that's on the list. Is it now? It is. Hey, and we're back, man. We got the back half of season one coming. Oh, yeah. So, what do we got to talk about? What do we got to mention before we're out of this one? And uh, just some important messages to to, um, to leave you with before we go, dear listener. So, the podcast it can be found in all popular places and more and more popular places as we go along, which is really cool. It's in all of them. It's like all everywhere. Well, yeah, nearly. I mean, it's still a few places that are looking at us and thinking, do we really want them on our network? Yeah, maybe. Um, if and that, just go to the website where we have all the episodes. Bullet-list.com. That's the place. And I was about to mention that. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, also on the website, which is bullet-list.com, podcasts 
um, RSS feed, the website RSS feed, and any other technical details that you'd like to know that we may have written on there. And um, thank you to the person who did the voiceover. So, Stuart. Stuart Mitchell of Catch the Mice. And of course, good old Ollie for doing his lovely um, little voiceovers. So, and I've got. Oh. Yeah, that's it, I think. Have you got anything else you want to mention? No, I was actually going to say see you tomorrow. Okay, then. I'll see you tomorrow, then. <laughs> oh, we're such pros. Oh, this is so well. Going so well. Okay, thank you, dear listener, for listening in, and uh, we'll see you in the next episode.